go. Okay, we're here again, um, Facebook uh, Live folks, and uh, you're gonna be joining us on YouTube uh, soon. Welcome to this week. Uh, Scott Hiley, hey, what's Morning, up? Morning, how's it going? Good morning, Revolution. It was a great poem by uh, Langston Hughes by that title. Oh, I'll have to check that out. I'm looking for poems for the party's 100th anniversary. And the one I'm really looking for is one by the great Richard Wright, and it was uh, entitled Transcontinental. Uh, and it, it begins, Lenin's line is our steam line, United Front Strike, and then it goes from there. Oh, wow. It's extremely powerful, powerful poem. And I think uh, a comrade at, uh, in Massachusetts has found it for us. And I'm just looking for, I haven't read it since I was in college. I remember was sitting up, you know, with a guy from uh, uh, Northern California uh, when I was in college and I read him that poem and he almost fell out. He was so impressed by it. He said, oh my God, this is not a left-wing guy. <laughs> this yeah. is, uh, he, he said, that's the baddest poem I've ever heard in my life. Bad meaning good, you know, it was just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And so, uh, uh, just one uh, one second, comrades. If you're if you're watching us on Facebook Live and you see a little button that says uh, uh, the option to have a watch party, um, go ahead and click on that. That'll send out a uh, a notice to your Facebook friends saying that you're watching this week at CPUSA um, and invite them to join in. Um, you know, I was unaware of that feature. Uh, a comrade recently in Arizona uh, said that uh, he had been. Um, using it and actually had some some success getting people to you know some share of this well share the well we want people to see it don't don't hold it to yourselves you know spread the word we want people to watch and to debate and to engage and uh, speaking of debating there's a lot going on you know, yeah. there's a big debate in DC is there a constitutional crisis so you, had some, you had some thoughts on that what, what how, what's your um how, do you, how would you define a constitutional crisis? No, I don't think there's a constitutional crisis. I think that a constitutional crisis occurs when the three branches of government are at odds with each other. So for example, if the House and the judiciary makes a decision that the executive uh, rejects, at that point, you have a constitutional uh, crisis. But so far, it's just, the House Judiciary Committee voted to, and other committees are voting to ask the Trump administration to provide documents and witnesses, and they're saying, hell no, we won't go. So, and it's gonna to go to court. But it's just to, 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 to push on that a little bit, um, the Supreme Court is now packed with, not entirely with, well, with conservatives, but not all of whom are always favorable to Trump. The federal judiciary, He's been doing a, a pretty good number on packing. So um, could there, I mean, if we have a judiciary that's, uh, the, the, so the, the courts that'll settle these matters of executive privilege and all of that, if uh, those are controlled by Trump nominees, um, can there be a constitutional crisis or is, well, at that point, again, the answer would be no, because the right, would have a gridlock hold on two branches of government and their position would dominate. So then we need, I think we need to add another category of this because you know, the, it may not be a constitutional crisis, but there's clearly a, you could call it a democratic crisis or a, yeah. a crisis we're in the midst of one. There's a political crisis. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a, some people say that even with the unemployment rate the way it is that there's a economic crisis you know, there's an environmental crisis, you know, so there are several different, but I don't think that um, it's good to hyperbole with respect to what's going on in DC. You know, uh, if you keep, it's like the boy or girl who cried wolf. If you keep saying crisis, 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 but you know, government continues to function, albeit in a, you know, haphazard and um, broken down kind of way, you know, when the real crisis happens, people will yawn and say, 
Oh my God, there they go again, you know. So, so. But let, I kind of want to revisit um, a point that we raised earlier. And you, you wrote a, an article, I think it was an article, something about a time to say the F word, right? Time to talk about the fascist threat, um, yes. talk about fascism. So if the way that the that right wing power is is being structured is through control of two branches of government um so you're suggesting that the sort of the the the, po the power of the trump regime could continue as sort of a legitimate democrat well legitimate in quotation marks constitutional constitutionally legitimate power that fascism is not I guess, how do we square that? We're not in a constitutional crisis, but there's a, a fascist threat. What's the... Well, I mean, the um, first of all, they had uh, quote unquote control of all three branches of government mm -hmm. up until November of last year. And then there was a uh, setback for the right with the election of a majority of Democrats uh, to the uh, House. Uh, propelled by a mass movement that, by the way, seems to have ebbed a little bit with respect to the number of people who are out in the streets and uh, online, uh, you know, doing things, uh, uh, taking, taking the struggle, you know, to, uh, in, in a, to the public square. Uh, and that's, I think, problematic. So the, the danger, um, I think, you know, comes from the uh, extraordinary uh, abuses of power that the uh, right wing have been engaging in. The attacks on the press, the attacks on mm -hmm. uh, other public institutions, on other sections of government, uh, the attempt to dismantle, you know, the administrative state uh, as uh, one of their ideologues likes. Like that's where the, uh, but, but more than that, it, it, it comes from outside of the administration, you know, from big capital, mm -hmm. its financial sector, and the mass movements that are being organized around it, mm -hmm. by sections of the evangelical church, you know, by the militias, you know, mm -hmm. uh, by the online uh, alt-right groups and so on and so forth. Um, uh, but it's just a danger at this point. Um, I, I don't think that we are in an imminent that fascism is an imminent tomorrow uh, threat. It could occur if a constitutional crisis were to occur. Mm -hmm. That is to say, if you had a situation where the House votes and the judiciary supports it, and then the uh, Trump administration, which holds executive power, control over the military and other institutions of state repression, says, hell no. We don't. So, we, so what do you it At that point, like, you have a problem. I think it seems like there's a they're 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 behaving in a well a way that is uh, either desperate or openly provocative or both. Like the 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 level of sort of defiance and um, I don't know what you call assholery. Uh, seems to have been ratcheted up a couple that's notches. A good, that's a good way to describe it, assholery. <laughs> uh, but you know, so you, you've got these, um, you know, the increasingly uh, the the you know the pursuit of an increasingly harsh, brutal, inhumane policy on immigration, um, the increasing an open, proud uh, disdain for uh, the Congress, which is the the most expresses the will of the people more than any other um, institution of government. Um, uh, also the, hardball. what's that? It's called hardball. Yeah. Um, so are, are they, are, do you think they're trying to, are they trying to precipitate some sort of a um, shake up? Some always been I don't know what, what's different than, you know, Trump has, is employing the Roy Cohn, Mm -hmm. uh, Joe McCarthy form of governing, you know, um, never apologize, you know, uh, permanent war, uh, attack, 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 never retreat. I mean, he's been also, doing it on the street. So I'm not sure what's different, huh? 
Oh, and, and doing it well, but it seems like there's an uptick, and especially on the international level. So in the past couple of days, they tried. You know, their their uh, the coup in Venezuela seems to have failed. The coup attempt, um, uh, yes. even by the admission of you know folks, the Washington Post and the New York Times who were pushing it. Um, but they then they turned to North Korea. They seized a, a North Korean vessel, accusing it of violating sanctions which they've never done before. Mm. Uh, they're making really, really aggressive moves on Iran. Pompeo made a, a surprise visit to Iraq to mm. uh, um, paint Iran as the, the great enemy of the- And then you had the Israeli election. Yeah. So I, I think they're, things to me seem to be, they seem to be pushing hard to make this uh, as, to push us into a crisis as, quickly and as deeply as possible. And don't forget that today Trump raised tariffs on 25% mm -hmm. uh, on Chinese yep. goods. Who is that gonna hurt, you yep. know? The working man and woman who uh, goes to these discount stores yep. that uh, import lots of goods from, uh, so it's it's possible that it may, might uh, backfire. But mm -hmm. yes. from, from, from their point of view, the economy is doing well uh, and they're in a strong position. And so I, I think that they're betting on if, 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 if they can maintain their base and uh, win the Midwest, uh, they'll have the presidential uh, election safe in hand uh, come uh, next year. So what, I think one of the things we need to pay attention to is the um, the way that that Trump in particular is trying to like uh, trying to play the the populist card. Um, uh, so uh, he there have been initiatives on um, like supposedly to combat high drug prices. Um, he's made critical noises, I believe, about a. Uh, Amazon and how it doesn't pay taxes. Um, of course, I mean, his program is fundamentally anti-working class, but he's trying to, I think, um, you know, build his cred on that and make it look like he's, which he's always done, but I think he's, you know, it's going to shift into high gear as we get closer to the elections. Yeah, and then and, and don't forget about what he's doing on the border. You know, he was at that rally and, mm -hmm. and yeah. the other day and somebody shouted out, shoot him. And he and just he, sort of laughed it off, yeah. He made a big joke about it. Only in the panhandle mm -hmm. can you get away with this rather than you know, con condemning it. This is in a day when how many children got shot this week in, in, in the high schools, you know? Oh, and then, uh, and then the Lordstown plant, the GM plant. Yeah, um, he's, trying to act, he's trying to get that truck company that makes yeah, it. Like, has, so he's gonna replace a plant that employed, what, a few thousand people with one that employs a hundred? Yeah. yeah. Great, great victory. Great. Good, good luck with that, you know, sadly. That's my hometown, by the way. Oh, you know, really? Youngstown area, yeah, man. That's, uh, mm -hmm. Lordstown is, you know, two, two minutes down, down, down the road, you know, mm -hmm. um, a little bit west of Youngstown. Uh, it's a suburb, you know, mm -hmm. so it hit, it hit our community. And it was the last big industry. Mm -hmm. you, got, you got new core steel, yeah. you got the Lordstown plant, and that's it, you know? Other than that, it's drugs and uh, alcohol, and uh, yeah. more drugs and more alcohol. I mean, that's that's uh, that's the lives of the working class, you know, folks, and um, and that's why I think that Trump is going to lose come uh, next year. So tell me, what is the Communist Party doing this week? How's the pre-convention discussion going? Uh, it's um, it's moving along. You know, we got a we got a webinar coming up. I think maybe, I mean, they're all important. They're all wonderful. Um, but on May 19th, so a week from Sunday, uh, we're going to have a, an online webinar discussion of the role of the party um, yeah. and our vision of socialism. I'm going to um, be talking about Marxism and the party of a new type, you know? I think, I think that we should maintain that concept party of a new type. Some and, people don't like it. I love it. I'm not ashamed to say it. And I think that the new type of the party is the party that is based on working class leadership in all fields, politically, ideologically, intellectually, morally, 
mm-hmm. organizationally. That's a new concept. Yeah. Powerful, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, we should hold on to that, you know, that the working class and people need to lead. That's what we're yeah. all about. And then, and, yeah, that's that's why, and the the... The con- the, that's the purpose of the Communist Party is to help the working class achieve that leadership. Um, that's my reason for being, you know, there was a time when ideas were brought into the working class from outside, you know, but with the introduction of the public school and public education, universities, you know, you have, you know, um, literacy, you have training, uh, you know, I think about my dad, you know, he only went to high school, but he was a very well-read, very well-spoken, yep. very, very smart guy. He was a combustion uh, and a, a boiler engineer in the steel mill, you know. Mm-hmm. So they know, they knew how, you know, the, the factories operated, you know. And uh, so they were able to run it. They, they could have if, if they yeah. could run the place. They, that's what they did. They had all of the skills. So if you can run the factory, you know, you can run the state. And, and, and that's well, what- and, that, and that's the thing. If you look at capital now, like the, the, big, the, the big capitalists, they don't, they don't know anything about their respective industries. Mm. They, they, they're shareholders. They, they, you know, they own holding companies and hedge funds and, and things like that. They don't you know, the working class does not need, there is no, nothing that the capitalist class has except for the means of production that the working class needs. On the other hand, though, let's, let's you know, tell the truth because the economy is becoming increasingly complex. You have the introduction already uh, 20, 30 years ago of automation. Mm-hmm. You have uh, the introduction of robotics you know, uh, and artificial intelligence. And that's creating new problems for production and work and governing and so on. And so they say that 20, 30, 40% of the working class today in 20 years won't be working anymore. So that's kind of a new situation that we have. But, but, you know, who knows? Who's who's the expert on that process? Is it the- We are. (laughs) Yeah, it's the worker. Yeah, there you go. And part of and, and part of what we have to convince people of is is yeah is that they are the experts on capitalism. It's not the 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 economists who you know um, are surprised every time a crisis occurs. It's right. you know it's the right. the workers who experience the system. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. But speaking of uh, webinars, we have one coming up on Sunday, Venezuela. Our own Michael. Lynch was down at the WUFTI World Federation of Democratic Youth meeting in, in Caracas uh, last 